Hey friends, welcome back to part two of our UE4 tutorial series. This tutorial is going to build off of some of the things we learned last time, so if you don't already know how to look around and pan around in a 3D editor, you're going to want to make sure that you watch the previous video. Today we're going to cover a few more of the basics, such as, first, how to create 3D objects in your level, second, how to change their position, rotation, and scale, and third, how to build simple levels using those objects. You're going to learn to do these things in service of building what's called a white box or sometimes a gray box. White boxing is a really fundamental stage at the start of a game project where developers use simple shapes and primitives to build out a level to try and understand, without using a bunch of extra art and code, how that level is going to look, feel, and play when people move through it. So learning how to white box is going to unlock you being able to build levels like this on your own. Let's get started. So before we begin, you should have the project open that we were working on last time. If you don't have that open, go ahead and get that open and make sure that you're looking at this view and that you've loaded back in. If you are looking at this view, then you should be able to use the fundamentals that we learned last time, like hitting the F key and panning around with WASD or the arrow keys, as, as well as your right mouse button, to take a closer look at things. So to get started, let's take a look at this editor cube 11 over here. We're going to go ahead and focus in on, on this one. Um, as you've probably noticed by now, when you click on an object in Unreal, you see this little kind of red, green, blue arrow situation in the middle of it. And this is true for nearly everything in the editor. Um, I don't believe there's an official term for this in Unreal. Unity calls it a gizmo. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and call it a gizmo here too. Um, but your gizmo is basically a representation of 3D axes. So that would be the X, Y, and Z axis, which are the three axes that define 3D space. Um, this red axis, this is the X axis. Green is for Y and blue is for Z. Z is up. Uh, not all game engines have, have Z as up, by the way. They're called Z up engines if they do. Um, just a heads up that this is something that's particular to Unreal. Uh, but now that you're looking at your cube, I want you to try and hover your mouse over just the arrow portion of this little gizmo. You should be looking at kind of the red arrow here. And once you have one of them yellow and highlighted, go ahead and just click left mouse button, hold down and drag. And you should see the cube move like this along that X axis. This is how we're gonna move things around cleanly in space. Um, you'll often find that uh, moving things around, it's really tricky because things get stuck in the floor, things get stuck in the sky, and we lose where they are. So if we can actually move them along axes, it's a lot easier for us to move them cleanly without them getting totally lost in space somewhere. So uh, go ahead and take this cube and just practice dragging it along the three axes. Again, that's left mouse button over one of these arrows, but it has to be yellow. Click and drag and just try moving it around um, and manipulating it for yourself to kind of see how that works. So right now we're on translate, which is where you just move things around. But the other two here are rotate and scale. So let's go ahead and click the rotate gizmo to start. Um, and we're going to, again, use the same three axes. Uh, they've changed appearance a little bit, but it's still the same. And you can click and drag along that axis to rotate your cube. Um, and you'll see it actually changes into a, a radial kind of number right here. There's that little number that's a appearing over the, the center console. And that number indicates the number of degrees that you're rotating this thing. So if you want to do a 90 degree rotation, I can say pick negative 90, let go, and that cube has been rotated a full 90 degrees. Uh, similarly, you know, you can rotate it along these two axes as well. Um, and if you want to scale an object, let's go into scale mode. Once again, if we're familiar, red, green, blue, you can scale it by dragging those. Um, but there's a little bit of a trick to the scaling mode. It's a special one. Uh, there is this white cube at the very center. And if you hover over that white cube at the center, all three of these will light up simultaneously. So if you click and hold over that and you drag, try it now, you'll see that the whole thing scales uniformly. And this really comes in handy when, for example, we're working with... Um, something that has very specific proportions. So like a character in a game, for example, you don't want your character to get horribly squashed and stretched because then all their animations are gonna be out of whack and their eyeballs might be coming out of their skull. I've seen it happen, it's ugly. And you probably wanna uniformly scale that character so that they're not doing weird things. So this is why we might use that. Um, but for now, I want you to take some time and just try scaling this cube and manipulating it. 
make it really skinny, make it really fat, make it really long, and just give that a go. So now that you've hopefully become comfortable with scaling, rotating, and moving these simple objects, let's try making a ramp that we can walk up and let's see what happens. So let's take this cube and we're gonna rotate it so that it's like sticking through the floor. Oh, maybe that's too steep of a ramp. Maybe we'll do like a little bit less, kind of like this. And just move it through the floor like that. Looks like a pretty good ramp, right? We can kind of pan around it and see. Okay, but hang on. If we hit the play button, something's gonna happen. Oh no, it leveled out. What? What a surprise. Um, there's a reason for that. So these cubes that are in this scene by default, they're actually physics cubes and they're meant to be fun things that you can shoot with the default gun and send them flying, but they're not great as platforms because they're not solid. Uh, these mobility settings over here on the right, it's set to movable. And what we want, if we want this to actually be level geometry that we can walk around on and move on top of, we're gonna need to make it static so that it doesn't move and doesn't have physics properties. So let's go ahead and click that static button. And now when you hit play, you should see this kind of like very uh, static ramp that you can walk up and we can basically just uh, experience the set of stairs that we made. So now if we want to build a second platform that we can walk off from this ramp, uh, we actually have a couple of options. Number one, we can take some of the cubes that are already in the scene. Just keep in mind that these are the pre-placed cubes that were in this project by default. So uh, you'll actually need to change those mobility settings to static if you want to use them. Um, if you want them to be shootable physics cubes, you can make them movable and do that. Um, I highly recommend just making a pile of very tiny movable cubes and shooting it. It's kind of like shooting down bowling pins. It's pretty great. Uh, or we can go over to this modes panel, which again, we kind of described as like, let's go into the art store, right? We're gonna go pick up some new paints to put in our palette. So let's go ahead and pick, um, if you don't have this basic tab selected and this, this place tab selected up here, go ahead and do that. And you should see this panel of a bunch of shaves down here. Uh, you're gonna wanna take a cube, drag it into the scene, and that gives you a brand new cube. And this cube is actually set to static by default. So it's nice and clean. So we can take that cube and we can manipulate it. Um, let's move around and let's get this guy out of the way. We're just gonna delete him. Take this cube and we're gonna scale it and make it into a platform that we could hop onto at the top of our ramp. It's not gonna be, it's not like my best work, but it'll do. Yeah, okay. So now when we hit play, we actually have this ramp that we can run up. There's a platform up here that we can stand on. Yay, we're up high. Okay, but what if we don't want everything to be cubes? What if we, for example, want to put a sphere in the scene? Same principle, click and drag here from that basic panel. You can drag a sphere in, you can make that really big. Um, you can also drag cylinders, cones, planes. A plane, by the way, is just a, a an, an extremely flat cube. You can technically turn a cube into a plane if you just make it like, you know, zero height. Um, planes have absolutely no height. Uh, they're invisible if you look at them from the side, like this one is. And all you do with a plane is you can usually apply textures to it. So if you wanted like to put a sign on the wall or some, uh, some text, um, we'll cover that in our next tutorial, which is uh, materials and textures, but that's what a plane would be useful for. So we'll touch that in a little bit later. So let's take some time to try and build a simple scene. Now that you've learned how to drag in basic primitives, you just need to build something really, really simple. Take a break and come back to this video when you're done. Okay, so I built this pretty simple kind of diving board-esque situation here. And when I go in and hit play, I'm gonna walk all the way up to the top and cool, look, I'm up higher than anything else in my scene. You might notice uh, if this is your first time building ramps and platforms that sometimes the ramps are too uh, chunky or misplaced for you to actually walk up them. Your character does have legs and just like a human being, if they can't actually you know, get over a gap that you left between two platforms 
or they have trouble clearing a ramp because it's too high uh, off of the platform beneath it, you will need to make adjustments until your character can actually walk up it. But once you've got that working, go ahead and explore the new thing that you've made. And uh, hey, you've learned how to place basic primitives and you've learned how to do simple white boxing. So we are gonna end today with a small optional homework assignment. I want you to think of a space that you find really meaningful. That could be a space that exists in real life or it could be a space in a game that you really love. Then I want you to take the level that we worked on today and take some of the basic shapes that we just worked with and try and create a space of your own that feels like it evokes the feeling of that space that you love. See if you can really get it to feel like, even at a basic level of fidelity, it kind of has the same sensation when you walk through it. As always, if you have any questions on anything we learned today, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. Otherwise, I'll see you at our next lesson.